When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, I'm calling to schedule an appointment for my daughter, Abby Brown. Her date of birth is, and my phone number is, so that's how our day is going this morning. Hi, welcome. We actually catch her <laughs> before she's going to the bus. <sighs> so, I'll explain everything here. But we're rushing to get Ashley out the door, but also ready for her, what do you have tonight? Performance at UW, and She's got to go straight to a birthday party right after that. And so we have this bag packed for her birthday party to go to. She's going to be late to that. And then I've got her, well, is that your bag of cheer stuff? Can you hand it to me? So I'm going to put it on the counter over here. Right. As soon as she gets home from school, she has to do her makeup here, like fast, because we have to fight. Friday traffic to go to UW, which is going to be a nightmare. So I am going to get all of her uniform ready to go. Spanx. We need red Spanx. Everything red. I'm going to fold all this stuff up and put it here for when she gets home. And yes, it is only 8.45 in the morning. <laughs> um, Jason's already started a list. He is home for the day. What are you doing? I really honestly don't know how this is, day is actually gonna end up. I will explain in just a second why I'm making an emergency appointment for Abby to go back to her surgeon in just a second. I didn't, I didn't mention it because I forgot. We have a lot going on today. What do you get to go do today, Ash? I get to go visit the middle school. She does. She gets to go do the middle school tour and it's funny because all the a lot of the other parents are like first time middle school parents. And you can tell Ashley is from a family where she's the last child. Yeah, I'm like to go to middle. Like, <laughs> I think I've seen them three times. But um, oh, you're packing stuff for the party. Okay, you actually need to go. But oh yeah, you, you're gonna miss the bus. I don't want to take you. Have fun at the middle school. Yeah, Chelsea gets to sing in the choir for her. She's stealing gum from me. Oh. Chapstick. Okay, you gotta go. You're gonna miss the bus. Have fun at the middle school. Bye. Chelsea's singing in the choir for her, and is gonna make fun of her. I know. I'm Say hi to her friend Emma. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, we're gonna quickly explain. Oh, this is awful lighting, but we're just going to quickly explain, one, why I haven't even gotten ready for the day, um, and two, why we are kind of having an emergency situation with Abby. It's not like to the point where I need to take her, rush her to an emergency room, hopefully. Um, I haven't talked to her this morning, but she has, she describes it best. Um, so I'm not going to be able to like describe it myself. Um, but she's having pain in her jaw at incision location and there's a small bump. Um, it hurts to open her mouth more than an inch and it hurts to talk and it hurts to chew again. So we put in a call to the surgeon yesterday. Um, talked to the surgeon. Well, I didn't talk to the surgeon. Talked to the physician's assistant and the nurse and we are scheduling an emergency appointment for her to get in. Also got her on antibiotics yesterday. I have no more hangers down here for myself. Um, so she's on antibiotics now as of last night. Picked those up and that's just for fear of infection um, as a, just a precaution. I think that's what it is. They're hoping that's all it is. Um, but also, that's still kind of scary because you don't you don't mess with inf any infection. But like infections in the mouth are kind of a scary thing because they can they can escape to the bloodstream to scary places very very fast. So the doctor wasn't playing around with that yesterday. Um, I'm gonna wait. He told me it would be faster if I left a message, but they also are leaving. They also are going to call me to schedule an appointment for Abby to get in. I just don't know how we're gonna manage all of that today. If they if they can get Abby in today, 
will drop everything and I'll go and I'll take her. It's just that between Ashley's cheer, or yeah, her cheer performance tonight and I, we have a project outside that we're gonna work on as soon as Jason is done eating breakfast. This is the question I have. Do these get hung or folded? Are they casual pants or are they work pants for Jason? I honestly don't know his. So anyway, I will show you out here in the garage what our plan is and what's gonna take up most of our morning here, but we only have three more hours to kind of get it ready to go. And then we have errands to run, things to prep for just in case I have to take Abby and go to the hospital today. So it's kind of a crazy morning. All right, my first tip of the day, when you know and you have advanced warning that it's gonna be a little chaotic, stay on top of the chores. Started the laundry. We have loaded Ashley's dishes for her. That can't be started, so we're leaving those in there. But that way, this doesn't feel chaotic if I happen to come into this situation. If I'm coming through the laundry, I can move a load, fold a load quickly. I got Ashley's cheer stuff ready for tonight when she gets home. She has cleaned her bathroom area, which is always nice. And I think we mostly cleaned up. That is another project. We're gonna work on that another day. Um, maybe tomorrow. That's a great one for tomorrow for her. That was, is her birthday party bag. Um, she's gonna stay late. We're, we've never done sleepovers before. Um, I've agreed to a sleepover because she's gonna be late to the party, but kind of encouraging her to just come home super late. That's on me. I gotta go get her, but I, it's, a thing. I don't do sleepovers, but we're trying to figure it out. So we're going to move that this out to the garage, which is where we're going right now. With the hoodie on, you kind of look like a little, <laughs> I don't know, hoodlum. I don't know. All right. Well, our tech genius. Our tech genius. Yeah, you do look like a tech genius going to Microsoft or Amazon. Um, yes. So here is our situation right now with our donation pile. And I will say gladly that we have um, gathered the most out of everyone on Ashley's cheer squad. I was appalled at the, oh, I've got two bags. Oh, I've got four bags. And I'm like, um, we were supposed to get a hundred people. Where are your hundred? We're coming up on a hundred, but that's our pile. But our scenario for the, today is that we are selling this food storage shelf and food that's here in the middle. Um, I'll, let me explain what this is and then how we're going to get rid of it. Backing the car out. So long-term food storage is kind of a thing for our religion, if you didn't know. I will say the shortened version, we are Mormons. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is what they like us to say now. Um, that is the name of our church, but um, I don't go into religion. I won't throw that down your throats at all, I promise you. Just explains um, food storage um, is for emergencies, for, you know, bad case scenarios, um, lose a job, pandemic. But what we learned um, from the pandemic, we've had this food storage for over a decade. Probably even like, I don't even remember when we got it, but we've had it a really long time. We did not, we did not use it during the pandemic, which is the biggest emergency we've ever had in our entire marriage. And that's coming from getting married and two weeks later moving to Seattle the day after the, um, the plane towers crashed in to the World Trade Center. So 9-11. We got married end of August, went on our honeymoon, came home, planes crashed on 9-11. That was our first day in Seattle. So we've had some emergencies in our marriage and we used to use this food storage way more. I've gone through all the flour, all the sugar, um, some powdered milk, some of the dried fruits, um, rice. Um, I've even done all the wheat flour. I've replenished it, um, which is the idea. Um, and I'll show you how it rotates. It's a rotation system. But it just suddenly occurred to me, one, Jason and I are trying to declutter and minimize, not minimize, but like just trying to like get rid of things and not, you know, that we don't need um, and trying to sell things because we got some things to pay off. <laughs> and this food storage was an idea because we're not using it but it's still worth something and of value to someone else. Um, and so we offered it to any of our friends if they wanted to buy it from us because it is expensive when we bought it initially. It actually had to get shipped to us on a crate. Jason's gonna want me to get out of the car um, and go help him. Uh, so our friends are buying it from us 
but it takes a lot to undo the entire system. They're bringing a trailer over to put everything on to take it home. Um, and so I just know that they're gonna be able to utilize it more than we will. And she was very excited, my friend, the ones that we go and have our game nights with is who is buying it from us. They are very excited to use it and she will utilize it. They will use it. So I'm happy to give it to them. Ooh, Jason might get rid of a packing. Will he get rid of some gear? There's a man in the wild. There's a man in the wild who might get rid of some climbing gear. You see him? Do you spot him? He, he, oh, where did he go? Where, there he is. I think there's, that, that might, is there mold on that? Not that I see. But are you gonna get rid of it? You have your other one. I have my others. Okay, all right. Just imagine this is a uh, crafting room. Lots of things you've accumulated. And I organize it and keep ready it to use. ready to go. I have, don't. He can't even. I'm going to shut the window on him because I have decluttered and the things that we still have are actually used. I would say if we could put like a... I mean, let me look, offer this to him. He's being snarky. I can be snarky right back. If we were to put like some kind of a heat sensor mode on each of the buckets that I have in my beloved craft room. Um, <laughs> right, we would see how often each of my buckets are used. Not even, not just on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis, a monthly basis. My stuff is used. So let's not go there. But in order to get access to this shelf, there's a bunch of stuff on it. Forcing him I should probably enough. sell this pack. You could. I mean, it's geared for Denali and like it's Rainier and stuff. Yeah, it's like a super. But don't not hat. put it back away just because you're gonna. I mean, like take a photo of it here and then put it away. Okay, so let me show you this shelf. All right, maybe Jason can demonstrate really quick the rotation system for this shelf. Just take a bucket out and put it, Jason. I know we gotta work on this, but I'm trying to explain the system. Yep, you take one out, put it up the top. Well, you take it out and use it. Then you put well, it yeah, yeah, yeah. But take roll. another one out, just show them. That's pretty dusty. So that's the idea. You can actually do it for smaller cans. You can, can set these, these like to pop cans. You can go all over. Yeah, you can just it's do just regular like cans. Dusters. We're hoping we can move it without it all coming apart because they don't want to have to like undo the whole shelf. Oh, really? That's the goal. That's the goal. That's why he's bringing his trailer because oh. he wants to just be able to lay it down on the trailer, which would be so much easier than this. It's a bugger. Laying down, I don't think works well because I don't think there's any cross pieces besides the plastic. All right. Well, we're gonna you have to get straps. Stand it up and strap it. Because it's not meant to be on its back, it won't, okay. it won't hold its shape. So we're going to get this cleaned off, and there's no pulling it out. We have to completely empty it, which we need a space to put all the cans um, stacked up, and then we'll pull out the shelving unit. Um, do you want to put this stuff up so it's out of the way? Okay, we are pulling them all off. This is a sign that they've gone bad. <laughs> Can you see the... It's all puffed up. Puff up on the set on the top, and it's baking powder. So I bet you it's like a giant brick of baking powder. Yeah, some air got in it or something. So these are good um, in these cans for 25 to 30 years. I mean, they're they're good for a really long time, and they were manufactured in 2008. So they've got a good, you know, five to 10 years on these guys um, in order to like keep using them. So. Okay, there's the shelf unit empty. Here is the food supply. Should I make Jason put it back so that I could get a shot of him pulling it out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should air compress it off. Yeah, so we'll move it, but I should move my car. Yeah, probably. Okay. All right, got this all cleared off, this all stacked up. This is a little bit wonky just because we don't have, like think this is what used to be on top of the shelf. We have these wooden planks right here and right here that we had placed on top of the shelf in order for you to be able to use the top because it's right now, it's like empty. 
So we're gonna give those to our friends as well. I do want to go and get um, another shelf unit like this guy at probably Costco. I don't know if we're gonna have time for that today. I also don't have time to like actually like put it together and make it happen today. So it is what it is for now. And then we got this kind of cleared off and organized a little bit. We are going through this kind of food storage. Well, we've these were on rebate in January, so we stocked up on those and oatmeal. I'm the only one who eats oatmeal. Jason a little bit, but discovered I still have three boxes of goldfish back there, which the kids need to start using, and pretzels, and then kind of baking supplies in there, as well as in this box here. Got some of our bottled goods still, and then these two shelves are pretty much cleared off. I still have some potatoes that I can cook for dinners. Anyway, just kind of been cleaning up this space here. I forgot we had so much PB fit. All right, I got ready to go. I can't even tell you. I'm going to get a present for Ashley to give to her friend at the birthday party tonight. Nothing fancy. Jason's even staying home. He doesn't even want to go with me. And our friends are coming to get the shelf in like an hour and a half or so. But I got a message last night. I thought everything was said and done with this car. Like we're signed off. The money has sent, been sent to Tesla. I have received a part of the money from my insurance company. I just needed to make an appointment. It was going to be perfect. It was perfectly timed. Perfectly timed. I got an email last night from Carlos at Tesla and he is still bickering with Tesla about getting one one inch part one inch part fixed and it's attached to a bigger portion and it's I don't know ex the exact amount but I like I said before I think we have we're a thousand dollars off what uh, State Farm is willing to pay I got a message from wonderful Carlos um, and he because they don't allow State Farm claims reps to enter their facility they don't work with State Farm so I have been the mediator between State Farm and Tesla this entire time time. And so it's really frustrating. But Carlos is wonderful and I've been able to communicate better with State Farm claims reps over the past couple weeks. So I thought we were all squared away except this one little part. And Carlos, he told me yesterday in a very great message that, um, he has communicated with them. He has sent them photos. He has done everything he possibly can to convince them that this one part needs to be fixed. But then he told me, we can't fix your car at all if we can't fix this one part because it doesn't meet Tesla standard and they have to meet Tesla standard. Like it doesn't matter who's getting their car fixed. It doesn't matter if insurance is covering it. They have to meet standard. They can't cut corners and <laughs> State Farm could care less. I just got off the phone with them and he's like reading me the same bloody statement. Looks like they didn't approve the repairs. Looks like they didn't approve the repairs. And I'm like, I can see that. I have the email. And I was like, this is not cool. I was like, this car is brand new. This car was off the factory lot. It was made for me. Six months later, I hit a raccoon. Not even six months. July, August, September, October, November. Five months later, I hit a raccoon. The car is in pristine condition. Mine is another scuff. It's in pristine, brand new condition. 10,000 miles on it, if that. And they won't repair the damage up to like full, you know, full repair. It's brand new. I hit a raccoon. You said I had comprehensive full coverage. I'm, I'm beyond. So I've sent another message back to Carlos so Tesla, Tesla, he's wonderful. And I've just said, look, they keep telling me, like the guy on the phone today, the claims rep kept telling me, all I can say is resubmit a photo. And I read somewhere in one of the emails from State Farm, or maybe it was the last claims agent that we talked to, he said beyond once Okay, so they said, so like the repair places, the mechanic places, send information in through this B2B, it's like business to business portal type thing um, in terms of like repairs and claims and things like that, right? So Tesla to State Farm. This claims agent told me they can't, redo an estimate unless a new photo is sent across. It's like they, once one set of photos has been deemed like repairable, not repairable, set an amount, set an estimate, whatever, they can't do anything else with that information until a new photo, a new document is sent over and then they can reevaluate. So I told the, I told Carlos, then send another photo from a different angle because they claim like I, I, they will look at it again if you submit another photo. You guys, I'll put it on the screen right here, the photo. I'll, I'm gonna download it and I'll show you. He even circled it with his little Apple pen to show the teeny tiny part that we're talking about. Beyond. Also, haven't gotten a call back to schedule an appointment for Abby and I was in a snarky mood. So when I messaged, I sent a message back to the nurse. <laughs> it's like, 
Um, your, your uh, scheduling department takes one to two weeks to get back um, in the path. 99% of the time it takes them one to two weeks from, for them to return my calls. Pretty sure she needs to be seen ASAP today or like Monday. So if you could light a fire under their butts to call me, that would be fantastic. I'm in a snarky mood, so I've earned my Coke that I'm gonna go get after I get a birthday present. And of course it started to rain. It wasn't raining. It wasn't raining. And now it is. <sighs> All right, we might have to make today into a part two kind of a situation. All right, but we'll, we'll get to that point. I'm gonna sit down and edit and we're gonna see how much we've got so far because we're only halfway through our day and I still wanna document the other half of our day. <sighs> So we might do a part two, but for right now, we're gonna see if by chance my new chair is actually white. All right, I don't, I mean, I can't tell. No, is matches. that close? Yeah, it matches. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got yourself an office chair, Jace. No, you can put that at your desk. <laughs> you wanted a chair out of this. Oh, oh, that's why I did this. It is, you wanted a chair. So he's gonna help me set this up and I'm gonna go edit. All right, we are gonna do a part two. I just edited. Okay, we're gonna do a part two. So stay tuned for the other half of our day. Going to UW. Maybe Jason and I will even stop off for something to eat or a dessert on our way home. We'll make it worth your time to come back for a, day, a part two. We'll just say that. We'll make it worth all of our time for a part two. Take care, see you tomorrow.